So at this time, we're going to bring up Sister Valerie. And she is going to be our speaker this morning. Sister Valerie, are you there? I'm here. Go right ahead, ma'am. Let's see, let me put you over. Now, if you just click on that allow to panelist, we can bring your picture up. I uh, don't see that. I just unmuted myself. I don't see allow to panelist. I don't see that part. Okay, hang on just a second. Okay, I click promote okay. to panelist and you just have to accept it. Okay. I just did. Okay, now open up your camera if your camera's there. There you go. All right, I am here. Amen. Praise the Lord. I went pretty smoothly <laughs> compared to last time. <laughs> Praise God. What a glorious morning. What a glorious white morning, all this snow. I don't know how much snow you guys got, but we got a, maybe a couple inches over here. <laughs> I was surprised when I woke up this morning, but God is good. Amen. God is good. It's, it's another glorious day still. It's beautiful out. And God has blessed us to see another day with breath in our body. Amen. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. And he is, yes, a way maker. Hallelujah. I praise God for another opportunity to come before you guys. Uh, it truly is a blessing. Uh, I want to get all the nervousness out of me. <laughs> but that's all right. God is good. Let's start with a word of prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. Bow, with bow down heads and lifted up hearts, Heavenly Father, thanking you for another beautiful day that you have blessed us with. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the many blessings for going before us, Heavenly Father, and directing our path, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing at your place, how you anoint each and every one of us, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the fast and many blessings on a fast that you have blessed us with, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this opportunity that you allowed me to teach your word, Heavenly Father, because this is your word, your lesson, Lord. I am just a vessel willing to be to you, to willing to be used, Heavenly Father. And I thank and I give you all the praise, Heavenly Father. I ask you, Lord, to just take over me, take over my thoughts, my words. Lord, I ask that you teach the lesson and not me. I move aside that you may take control and teach this lesson. Let the words be the words that the, that the people receive your words, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm so grateful, Lord. And I thank you for what you're already doing, for the blessing is already going forth already. I thank you, Lord, for touching their hearts, Heavenly Father, for taking control over me, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. He's so merciful. I just thank God. I just thank you for watching over us as we slept last night as by the well, as his protections around us. God is good. Amen. Well, so let's dive right in. So I've been blessed to teach out of the book of Galatians. Ah, and it's a, it's a small book, but powerful, very powerful. It only has six chapters, but it's very powerful. A lot of, a lot of wisdom, a lot of everything's in this book and I'm grateful for having it. The author of this book is Paul. And actually Paul, through my research, I found out he's a, for me, it was my first time. Well, not my first time. I think I knew he was an author of other books, but I didn't realize he was the author of the total of 13 books, I believe. I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he's the author of Romans, uh, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, as I already mentioned, Philippians, uh, First and Second Thessalonians, Philippian, Ephesians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, and Titus. So the original audience was the church, yeah, was the church's churches in Southern Galatia, Galata, Galata, Galatia, I'm sorry, pronounced that wrong, founded by Paul's first missionary journey. The date it was written 
uh, it was AD 49 prior to Jerusalem's council, which was AD 50. Where it was written, Antioch, which is a city, city in Southern Turkey, capital of ancient kingdom of Syria. Galatia is the ninth book of the New Testament. Galatian is a letter from Paul to a number of early Christian community in Galatians. Galatia, Galatians. The language, the language was originally written in Konoi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's Kone, Kone or Konoi. It's K-O-I-N-E. But that was the first original language, language it was written in. Kanoi is a uh, is a common language of Greeks. Uh, later, it was translated into other languages. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about, about Paul and his background, and so you can get a you know a really good idea on how the Lord came in and has turned his life around completely. Amen. So Paul's parents were Pharisees, strict Jewish nationalists who was committed to the law of Moses. Now the law of Moses, also called Mosaic law, refers to the Torah or the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. It is the law revealed to Moses by God. Now let's get back to Paul. So back to Paul's household. So anything Greek was despised in his household. His parents were determined to protect their children from the contamination of, of, of the Gentiles. They didn't like Gentiles, they just, they just despised them. What I, what I learned. Um, they didn't want their children to be contaminated by them. <laughs> now, Paul, which was actually born Saul, he was born around AD 1 through 5 in Tertius, Turkey. And the AD 1, the 1 through 5, I mean, through my research, it was different dates, different numbers. So I settled on this one. So I might be off a little bit, but it's close to it. So Paul, so actually I'm saying, so now Saul before becoming Paul was known for his brutal, brutal violence against the church. Saul was a, was a, was a lawyer. Let me back up a little bit because I've been using the name Paul, but as we all know, he was born with the name Saul. So I need to be using Saul for right now. So Saul was a lawyer and uh, all signs that he would become a member of the Sanderian, a Sanderian, which is a, uh, a Jewish Supreme Court of 71 men who would rule over um, Jewish life and their religion. Saul was a devoted, was devoted to his faith. It was, it was his devotion that led him down the path of religious extremists. During those times, there was nothing more frightening or more vicious than a, than a religious terrorist. Killing, killing innocent people, especially if they thought they was doing the work of the Lord. This is who Saul was, a religious terrorist. But God, God stepped in and changed him around. God can do all things. He can change anyone. He can step into your life, turn you around, set your feet on solid ground. That's the God we serve. We shouldn't be so quick to, to count people out, you know? Um, us as humans, a lot of time we do that. And it's not fair because you never know what God is doing 
in the in uh, on a person's in a person's life or what kind of relationship they may have with the lord they may have uh, been, uh or if they can't or if you can't see it from the outside of what the lord is doing on the inside you never know we so don't be so we shouldn't be so quick i'm not saying we actually do i'm the same people are quick to judge people by the you know by, by their past or by what they're doing now. I never know what the Lord is doing to, doing on the inside. We shouldn't be judging the book by its cover. Amen. And they did this to, um, to Paul. In Acts chapter nine, let's turn to Acts chapter nine. And I'm hoping I'm making sense here. I hope I'm not jumping around too much. Acts chapter nine, verses 20 to 21. Okay. okay. So Acts chapter nine, verse 20, that's a 20, yeah, 20 to 21. And straightway he preached in the synagogues that he is the son of God all that heard him were amazed and said is this not he that destroyed them which call on this name in jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests and so they're still thinking about the past and what he used to do so god came in and turned around but they were still connecting them to the past, which is not really fair, you know, not giving him a chance. They're still trying to, I mean, this is my words. I've been thinking they're still trying to pull him back to where he was. I don't know if that's probably the wrong words, but that's what came to mind. But you're still trying to connect him to, to the past and what he used to do. Even though he didn't change and is following Jesus now, they still remember what he did in the past. It just seemed like they're not letting him go. The Lord can change anyone regardless of their past or what they're doing currently. I can think of my brother who uh, passed away several years ago. And I don't know if I was judging him or not, but my brother was, was out there in the streets on drugs, just doing whatever. And he passed away, like I said. And I knew he believed in the Lord, but I never... Uh, he had a relationship with the Lord that makes sense. I never thought of him having any kind of relationship with the Lord, but he did believe because he, he was raised in a Christian home. Uh, but uh, uh, as we cleaned out his apartment, I ran across, I guess you call it a journal. He, he used to write a lot. He's a light writing. And he was writing, I ran across his journal and he was writing letters to the Lord. And and he would write about the Lord, help me to do this, this, and you help me to do this, change this, Lord. He was writing all kinds of notes and letters to the Lord. So he had a relationship. You know, it may not look like mine. I think I was expecting it to look like mine's, you know, and that's not fair either. I mean, every everybody's relationship with the Lord is different. I know I'm veering off, but I know the Lord puts this on my heart. But every Every, everybody's relationship is different with the Lord and communicate different with the Lord. And I was expecting him to be like mine and that wasn't right. And I don't know, if, like I said, I don't know if I was judging him, Lord, forgive me if I was, but, but he had a relationship, amen? And I thank God for that. So let's get back to the lesson. <laughs> okay, so there was a turning point in Saul's life. I'm sorry, I think I read that. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I didn't. There was a, there was a turning point in, law, in, in um, Saul's life. In Acts chapter nine, verses one to 22. And you don't have to turn there. I'm just gonna try to um, uh, summarize it. Uh, you can add your leisure when you can. Uh, take time out to read those, uh, those verses, that chapter, Acts chapter nine, verses one to 22. So I'm gonna summarize it. Acts chapter nine describes the other side of Saul. The former Saul who knew almost the whole Testament by memory. He knew, he knew the word, but 
he persecuted Christians for, for their faith in Jesus as the Messiah. But on the road to Damascus, amen, Saul met Jesus and went from a devout Jewish scholar to a gospel believing evangelist. Saul went from death to life. His, his experience with Jesus changed his life. His name later changed to Paul. This is when his name changed to Paul. I know I keep on putting the name Paul in there before I've been trying to wait on that, but now I can just use the name Paul. Uh, Paul's story, story was very powerful and heartfelt because he reflects what happens to anyone life who submits their life to Jesus. Whoever submits their life to Jesus, this can what happen. Submitting to Jesus can change anyone's life. I don't care what you're doing, what you're not doing, what it, it can change your life. Jesus has all power. I want you to think back on a time when you first submitted or when you first when you first got filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, Remember that the first time and how you felt the thoughts you was you was feeling. I can remember mine. I can I can remember like like it was yesterday. It was like I I, I remember getting it. I was at a different church then. I was it was like it was amazing. Sometimes I can't find the words. It was so amazing. It's like I was floating on cloud nine uh or -oh, cloud ten. <laughs> you know, it was so amazing, and it was just not just for that. The service. I feel like I was full, full in cloud nine though. Into the into the late night. It was just it was just a blessing. It still feels that way, you know. And I praise God for that. So praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want to get into more into the uh, the chapters of the book. And as I mentioned before, I mean Galatians is a small book, only six chapters but it's, it's really powerful. So in chapters uh, one through, ch yeah, chapters one through two, uh, in these chapters, Paul is concerned about the pure gospel. Paul begins warning the people and the churches. He cautions them about those who are not teaching the gospel of faith in Christ alone. He teaches, he, uh, these teachers, I'm sorry, these teachers were adding the observance of religious rituals to the gospel, saying these good works are necessary in order to please God, but they would seek to gain God's approval through performance. Paul explains, it's already been done. Amen. For us, it's already been done for us. Everything that is necessary for our salvation, Jesus has done it already. Jesus was nailed to the cross for our sins so that we, so that we, we may be saved. There's no works, no rituals that can take the place of what our Lord Jesus Christ have done for, our, for, our, for, our, for us, for our salvation. This made me think about this comedian on, on, on TV. He says, uh, what he says, he said, it's gotta be another way into heaven. This has gotta be, you know? And we know all the answer to that, <laughs> but there's not. <laughs> the only way is through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And through Jesus Christ, we are saved. Let's turn to John 3 and 17. John 3 and 17, and it reads, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that he, but, but that the world, I'm sorry, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen, it's in the word, it's in the word, through him, through Jesus Christ, that we might be saved. Amen. I thought that when I heard that comedian, when I heard about that comedian, that was something, but I'm sure he will learn. I'm hoping somebody will 
teaching. <laughs> Amen. So chapter three and four. And these chapters, um, Paul is Paul's defense. Or this is Paul's defense of pure gospel. In these chapters, Paul uh, points to Abraham. And he says, Abraham was not saved by observing religious requirements. But his belief in God, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but by his belief in God, Paul explains that obeying the law cannot save anyone. Christians are made right with God, not through, through the law, but because of God's grace, which grants salvation and freedom in Christ, freedom to serve God freedom to pray, freedom to worship, freedom to, to, um, to live holy, and the list goes on. Uh, so chapters five through six. In these chapters, Paul is speaking about the freedom, no, I'm sorry, yeah, the freedom in pure gospel. Paul instructs the Galatian Christian that they are to enjoy their freedom in Christ and not put themselves in bondage by trying to earn God's favor through good deeds. True goodness comes not from self-effort, but from submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit. Also, when you are, a, you are truly living a holy Christian life, no one can boast on how well you're living, how, how, I mean, how you're living holy, but because it's, but it's, it's, it's because it's because of Jesus Christ who has made it possible for you to live holy. And I think, and praise God, there's nothing but Christ that changed that can to do all things for us. That makes all things possible for us. Amen. And that's my lesson. And I hope and I pray someone was blessed by this word. And that's my lesson. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Valerie. That was a powerful, powerful word. Um, as you said, that, you know, the book of Galatians, 